So hello and welcome. This is one of my 60 conversations for my 60th year on this amazing planet. Um, and I have got uh, the delight and pleasure of uh, speaking to the lovely Derek Mason this morning. I don't know him terribly well. I've seen him, um, you know, about and I know he's an impactful dude. So <laughs> I thought, yeah, he's the kind of guy that I want to be speaking to and, and hearing um, the message that he shares about hope and what is possible for us when we get into this conversation. So I'm going to ask you, Derek, to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you and let's see where this goes. Let's see what involves today. <laughs> yeah, hi, Deborah. Um, thank you for having me on. Like you said, the 60th year of you being on this planet and <laughs> amazing life, amazing, amazing life that we live and the journey that we go on. Absolutely. And yeah, so um, just to share a bit about me, um, my name is Derek Mason. Um, I came into contact with the three principles or this understanding about 2017. And before that, I was living a life of, say I was lost, I was living a life of criminality. Um, I got this understanding when I was in prison serving um, a five-year sentence for selling drugs, something that I've basically done all of my adult life and something that I thought I didn't need to change or I didn't... Going to prison was like an occupational hazard. So, yeah, I just thought that was part of the ups and downs of life. And I went on a course um, beyond recovery facilitated by um, Jacqueline Hollow, Susan Marmot, Liliana Bellini, a few other people. And they sort of pointed me towards my thinking about how I created my own reality. And they talked about a thing called insights. And when we have insights, insights could like massively change your life or just, just allow you to see something different. And in prison, they don't, they, the courses in prison ain't usually like that. They usually tick the box. And mm -hmm. yeah, just to, just to show that you're ticking the right box means that you're on the road to rehabilitation or you're, so the, the tick box exercise would be, is it good to sell drugs? Yes or no? And then you have to, hmm, let me see what they want me to put there. <laughs> and then, yeah, but this Beyond Recovery it was sort of like talking about our thinking and like I said, how we create our reality. And I had an insight into my life when I was on the course, when I was on the programme. And it sort of centred around how I thought my mum was to blame for everything, everything that had gone wrong in my life. And that insight came about, and I didn't even know I was running that narrative. It was like, it must've been running in the background that yeah, my mum was to blame for everything. So it's all her fault. So that means what I do is sort of okay, because it's all her fault. If she wouldn't, have, she would have given me this when I was four. If she would have done this when I was, if she never make it so hard for me then. And it was sort of like an excuse. And I sort of saw that it had nothing to do with my mum. Had nothing at all to do with my mum. It's like, I, I make light of it now, but in my insight, I sort of saw that all my life, I'd put everything that ever went wrong on my mum's plate. And then in that moment of clarity, when I saw it wasn't my mum's fault, I thought, okay, so who else is in the room? <laughs> and it was only me left. <laughs> and all the arrows started pointing outwards. Started looking, who else could it be? But then I realised, oh, and it's only me in the room. And they all slowly just turned towards me. And I was like, oh, damn. But before that feeling would have come with oh no it's all my fault oh I, mm. I really am useless I really am thinking oh so but instead it came with a feeling of I don't know it came with a feeling like liberation like wow so if it's all my if it was all down to me then moving forward it's all down to me that means <laughs> hold on I can actually be anything I want to be <laughs> and that moment of like wow I could actually be anything I want to be and sometimes when I repeat it it sounds like, duh, that's obvious. Of course, you, can be, you don't have to do that. You don't have to. But when you see it in that clarity moment, and, and I felt it, and it wasn't replaced with anything, usually I'd have that feeling. It'd be like, yeah, I'm going to be a, I'm going to become a cab driver. I'm going to be a painter and decorator. I'm going to be this. It just came with a feeling of, I don't have to do that. And there's nothing else on the table, except you don't have to do that. And for me, even when I say it now, it sounds so, don't sound as impactful, but for me, that was like, wow. So who was holding me to that thought that I had to do that? And again, all arrows pointed to me. <laughs> when, I, when I put people in place here, yeah, the system, the schooling, the this, the that, no, all arrows just came straight back to me. And it was like, again, like, wow, okay. So if it's me, then that's like empowering. 
So I can basically be, there's nothing holding me back except me. And all the time, who's been in my way is me. And when I saw that, it just released my, something I called it at the time was unlimited potential. And mm. I sort of see, and this is how the principles work in such a beautiful way again, because to me, that unlimited potential at that time just freed me up and made me feel so free. But it only looked like I didn't have to sell drugs. <laughs> I didn't have to live a life of crime. To me, that was unlimited potential. Like, wow, I don't have to do that. But since coming out and going on this journey, I've realized unlimited potential means, hold on, I could become a director for Beyond Recovery. Wow, I can become a director for Free PGC. Like, wow, I can facilitate in groups in South Africa. Wow, I can. And the scope for unlimited potential has just gotten bigger and bigger. And now, before I limited it to I don't have to sell drugs, now the same feeling of unlimited potential, but I can see that it is absolutely everything. Unless I can't physically do it, mm. or there's some rule or regulation or some hard thing in place that I can't, some physical barrier, then I can basically do anything I want to do. And it doesn't hurt to achieve, to try to achieve it. And something I found out is that it's never the destination for me. It's all about the journey and and what we do on that journey. And we take it from moment to moment and just be in that moment. Then I find sort of next moment takes care of itself. Because on my journey, if I look back, I was released in 2018 And if I look back now, that's like five years. And I didn't plan any of where I am now. Not one thing did I plan. It was all taken in the moment. And every so often I have to look back and I have to say, wow, look what you've done, look where you are now. And sometimes I get up and it's like, oh, I've got two video calls this morning. (laughs) It's it's like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, this is, and then it just takes you and you just know that just to be in that moment, and put nothing on it. It's just a journey and each step we take is like what counts and what matters. And the past, I used to have so much judgment on my past and who I was and I had a spreadsheet, a bullet point plan on how I could get rid of that person and turn into this new person. That, But then I realized that doesn't matter, that doesn't count. You don't have to do any of that. If I just let go of my past as in knowing that Everything I've done was from a misguided or misunderstood understanding of how I work or where I, where my feelings come from. Then I stop looking outside of myself and I start looking inside of myself and start mm-hmm. having the knowledge of where I am. And I find that that benefits pe- me, benefits people around me. And the less I put on it, the more benefit I seem to get out of it. And it, <laughs> it, it works in total opposite to everything we've ever been taught. Like you have to work hard to get this and do this and put your idea and go for that goal. And I found it's more about just being in the moment and being in the moment opens you up to seeing the, what the real meaning of true potential. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, thank you. Yeah, and I love that. And and I think there was a, a, quite a few things. I mean, there was a lot of gold in all of what you what you shared there. And and I I do think, like you say, when when we share. When someone has an insight and, you know, obviously you had that insight and I had my, I've had my insights. Um, and when we share them, what actually the words and what comes out, just there is nothing to what goes on inside us. It is, it, you know, you, it is beyond the words what happens inside us. And uh, my son had a, a, a similar experience to, to the um, an, an insight like that. And he actually phoned me to tell me that the, when it was actually sort of all going on for him and, you know, the excitement and, and, and what was happening for him in that moment was, was just huge because he'd always... Um, um, he'd he's he'd always struggled with being violent and like if people would say something to him he would believe that he had to punch them or something like this and uh, we've been talking about the principles and talking about you know the, the role that thought plays and and how these things happen and how it plays out in that way and all of a sudden he he found himself in this situation and then he had the thought I don't have to hit this person and that that was his insight and it was, and it's a similar thing, you know, he just realized in that moment, he kind of, he was like, oh, I don't have to hit them if I don't want to. And a little bit like you, it wasn't as if 
you know, when he'd done things in the past, it wasn't as if no one had ever said to him, hey, do you know what? You don't have to do this. <laughs> I guess people said to you, you know what? You don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to be the person you are. You don't have to. But when it comes from within us in, in a moment, like when it happens like that, it literally is like a whole ping, 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 ping. And your entire world changes via this insight that we see and they can be huge or small or whatever but it's I know for my son that has just been life-changing and and what has come like you say that opens up what does that open the door to and it was a very similar thing it was just like you don't have to hit this guy and then it was like whoa <laughs> I never thought and like you know it's not like he'd never heard that before, but when he when he heard it, and so I think also just sharing the potential for insights like that. You know, it's not the details of what it is. It's not what comes through you particularly. It's not people say, oh, okay, so if I, if I um, you know, I, I don't have to do this. That's not the point. It's the fact of insight that we are all capable and to me, when, you know, one of the reasons I love having these conversations, one of the reasons, you, you know, and all the stuff that you're involved in, the 3PCG and, and all of those kinds of things and, and the conference we run, it's all about allowing people the space to sit in this conversation for a bit and almost open themselves up to the fact that an insight can happen to anyone in any moment. And it doesn't even have to be in this, like doing that, but it's just that yeah so thank you yeah that was really beautiful to share that I think it's interesting how you share that story about your son and the insight that he had and that is something that before my insight we'd have discussions in the groups and they were telling us about how our thinking works and something that came up for me and I use this as an example was they said that our thinking produces our feelings in the moment and we often react without even knowing that that system's in place. And firstly, straight away to me was like, that's, that doesn't happen, that's a lie. Because if somebody comes and punches me in my face, then automatically, I'm just gonna hit them back. There is no thinking involved, it's just an automatic process. And they said, okay, think about that. Just, you, you studied that for a while. And I thought, okay, let me sit with it. Yeah. And I thought, oh, okay, there is a, if somebody hits me in my face, there's a thought of this person just hit me in my face. Why did they, you know what, I have to hit them back. Mm. And all of this takes place in a nanosecond. Yeah, it's like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, so then there is a process what takes place, but it's just about listening to it and being aware of it in the moment. And I sort of saw from that, knowing that all the times that, that something like that had happened to me, I didn't have to take that option. Yeah. And that was something that appeared in my insight that even though I'd seen it then, automatically all of the time all of the previous times that I'd been involved in an incident like that and I didn't <laughs> see the other option they all highlighted to me that and I saw that option yeah it was, like, oh, it was always there but it was always there like no who put that door there no 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 that door wasn't there. and just from that slightest smallest awareness mm -hmm. that I don't have to react then not just you avoid the outcome of the reaction but you go in a total different direction yeah. as to something that you never would have dreamed of. And it's again, you go back to all them other situations and it's like, wow, so what could have happened then? What could have, <laughs> okay, so now I need to keep an eye out for those other options. And it's like exactly what you said. I say this thing where I could line up the entire population of the world at your front door and they all, as you open the door, they all tell you something about yourself you're the most beautiful person, you're the most amazing person, you, you can do anything. And when the last person, when you close the door on the last person, you're only gonna turn around and say, oh no, they're only saying that because, they're only saying that because he told them to say that. No, I don't believe them. I don't. It doesn't matter what anyone says to us. It is when we feel that thing from within and we feel that it's, that is true and it resonates as our truth, then nobody, nothing can wane us or accept our own thinking mm. about doubting it. And, and it's that feeling, because I always talk about the feeling and that feeling that I had when I had my first insight is the same feeling that I've been following day to day. And it's the same feeling that's got me here. And 
I can't even articulate it, but I know when other people are talking about that feeling, I know what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope that when I talk about this feeling, I hope that other people can, uh, can feel the feel of what I'm talking about because mm -hmm. that's the feeling that motivates me to get up and to be the, not even to be the better person, but just to be in the moment. And when I try to be in the moment, I, I go through challenges that previously I would I would have fell at the first hurdle. <laughs> Just being in the moment, yeah, just being in the moment and knowing that there's always potential for seeing something new and being grounded. And people always used to say to me, Oh, you're grounded. And I thought, I don't even know what that means. I don't. But then it's just about being, just being in, trying to be in the moment. Yeah. And, and that's, that, that's sort of how I see it. And like I said, that feeling that we get when we know that something's right. Like me talking to you and now, I know that this is just right. The way I feel now, I know I'm just moving in the right direction. I'm in the right space. Amazing. And that's the, that, that's the feeling that I'll continue to follow. Even sometimes I get asked to do things and the nerves will kick in and be like, oh, no, no, no. And I just say, no, just rely on the universe. The universe hasn't let me down yet. Yeah. When, I, when I come into contact with this understanding and I just get into that moment's flow and I don't know what I'm going to say, but I just trust in the universe that whatever passes through me will, 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 will be the right thing. And I've, I've followed that, and that is what's helped me to stay in the moment. I think that is, is really, really beautiful too, just to, because that's, like, our thinking tries to take us somewhere else, doesn't it? It takes us to the past, or it takes us to the future. It kind of says, oh, this has always happened, or, God, or the, yeah, what if, what if, what if? And when we get caught in either of those places, then we, we really, like you say, we shrink down the possibilities, we shrink down the, the potential. And one of the things I really, really loved about what you shared was, you said, you know, in that moment, it just opened up this like huge vista of, of what is possible. And it's not even like you, almost when you make a choice, <clears throat> we limit it back down again. But when we just, in that moment, when we see, and I too have just had those moments of, of seeing a habit that I always, oh yeah, when, when this, then that, when this, then that, when this, then that. And it doesn't feel like there's any process. It doesn't feel like there's anything going on. But that moment of when this, what? I don't have to do that. It's like, wow. <laughs> and the space that that opens is just huge. The possibility that that opens is just massive. And I think you've spoken about the feeling. I think it's really, really key because I think it's our feelings that, you know, we can navigate with our feelings where I don't know about you, but always in the past, I'd navigated by my thinking, you know, what do I think about this? What always the narrative, what the, the, the chatter, you know, that, whereas switching to navigate from, does this feel right? What is the feeling here? What, what, what feel into it? And just know that, when I'm not in a great feeling, it's kind of like I it's almost like I've I've moved away, I've closed down that possibility again. I've I've closed that huge vista that's open to possibility. And it's like, okay, come back to this now moment, come back to that feeling. Because I've seen that beautiful feeling that like underpins absolutely everything. And I went through a phase of kind of testing. I would ask myself this question am I all right even here? And there would be all sorts of, because I sort of, you know, I'd heard people say that this feeling underpins everything. And I really, you know, when I had been in that feeling, like you say, and navigating by that was just so beautiful. And then if I would lose it somewhere, if I would just come back to, well, am I all right even here? That would allow me the possibility. Again, it's this, it's changing from it's here, it's this person's fault, this, anything out here and come back to, okay, me look inside me come back within and every time when I genuinely ask myself that question am I okay even here I would that feeling would start to bubble up in me again and then it'd be like oh yeah this this is it I'm back I'm back in this moment I'm, I'm back to me and from there things just begin to happen again don't they you know ideas whatever things to do you find yourself doing them or <laughs> You know, you know what I love about that is it's, it's what I've seen about just being aware. And if we're just aware that we're okay, and it doesn't matter where we are on that scale, if we just know we're okay at all times, and even when we get into that limited spinking and we're in that tight space, 
rather than thinking, oh no, I've had these principles for so long and I shouldn't be here. What am I doing here? I shouldn't write, get out of here, get out of here. I shouldn't be. That just makes it even more tighter and it gets even more. But when we just ask the question, am I okay? Mm -hmm. Intrinsically, we know the answer to that. No matter where we are on that scale, we know we're okay. Yeah. And from we just tune back into that, am I okay? Of course I'm okay. We find a route out without even trying to find a route out. And for me, I found it might not happen instantaneously. It might be I sit down in that little contracted space for a little while, but I just know I will gravitate my way out of there. And it's just about knowing, because I used to have work for this company and sometimes they used to, I used to go in, they used to say, yeah, how are you doing? I'd be like, yeah, I'm okay. Certain times I'd be in a little mood and they'd be like, how are you? I'd be like, yeah, I'm okay. And I'd just find that, yeah, I'm okay, kept on coming out of my mouth. And I was like, why do you keep telling people I'm okay? And I thought, no, do you know what? Wow. Do you know what I've seen? That even when I'm in a low mood and I'm thinking, you ask me how I I know that I'm okay. No matter where I am, just on the little personal mind thing, yeah, I might not be, it might be a bit busy, but intrinsically, if you're asking me if I'm okay, I know that I'm okay. And just by knowing that sort of keeps us out, because it's when we create that scenario we're not okay, that we become not okay. Mm. But when we realize, okay, I'm in this space, but it's still okay then that seeps through and we find a way to, to, to access that okayness. Because when we block ourselves off from it and say, oh, I'm not okay, I shouldn't be here, then we sort of blocked ourselves off from it. And that is our simple when we stop looking outside for the okayness. Because I realised a lot of the time for me, my okayness was dependent on how other people were talking to me, dealing with me, handling me. So by effect, for me to feel okay, they had to change how they were talking to me or how they were and so I've delegated my okayness to somebody else. Mm. So, and more times than not, I would endeavor to try and change that person or to try to get them to that place. And then when they got there, it would be something else. And then it would, be, and then I'd say, I oh, know it's because of that. And it's never really worked out for me like that. But yet somehow I still kept on going to that as a default. This is where my happiness comes from. But like you so said, when I know that it's always in me, and I'm always connected to it. And it's okay for me to go up and down the scale because I've seen that this understanding isn't about always just being happy and being on a high and floating through life. No, we go through ups and downs. And when I'm on those downs, just by knowing that I'm okay, I can see something and learn something about maybe why I'm not feeling so okay. And, and, and that is always okay. And it's just, for me, like I said with this, the highs and the, the, the downs that I go on, I don't stay down there as long and I don't go as deep into them. Mm. And that is a part of me just knowing that at the core, I am okay. Because that is something that, that the major for me was I thought I was broken. I mm. thought I wasn't good enough. My insecurity, my all of those words were, were um, associated <laughs> with somebody that's got no confidence and got no thing about themselves and when I realized that that wasn't true and I am whole and I can be in any situation and nothing or nobody is above me and nobody's under me and just to show up as me, I've realized, yeah, that is something what has fueled me. Because at the heart of everything I'd done before that was that I was broken. Yeah. And I was acting <laughs> from a broken space. So look at me from a broken space. But now I've realized I don't have to do that. That's what made it a struggle. If I think my car's broken and I'm always driving it, then it's always going to be breaking down and it's going to be... Mm. And then I judge myself on how resilient I am in keeping the old car on the road. <laughs> but then if I realise there's nothing wrong with the car, then I can focus my resilience on just being me. Yeah. I I, yeah, that that is so, so, so key, isn't it? To To... I mean, our whole business is called Dare to Be You, and it's absolutely, you know, built on exactly that, knowing that there is there is nobody who is better than you and nobody, nobody who is beneath you and nobody that you are better than either. Mm -hmm. It's 
And and you and I here, you know, we're a perfect example of that. You know, I'm sort of like a middle class white woman and you're a black guy who's been dealing drugs. And it's kind of easily, easy. You could be easily like we could easily be judging each other for, for who we are and, you know, what makes me better, what makes me not so good, all of this kind of stuff. And oh, you're privileged or you're whatever, or any of that kind of stuff. And it's like coming back to see when we stop looking at each other through those lenses and we just see the truth of who we are, when we stop judging both ourselves, because I can be the harshest judge of myself. And then when I'm judging myself harshly, then that, you know, the two things go side by side. Like if I'm judging myself harshly, I'm going to judge you harshly too. And it's like, okay, if I stop judging myself so harshly, then I can see you more clearly for who you are. I can see who I am and I can see who you are. And I can just see that we are just aspects of the divine. We're just aspects of, of love. You know, there is total oneness here. There is nothing, nothing but our thinking divides us. And when we see that, you know, we can stand together. And in the world that we live in at the moment, I think it is so, so, so important on all sides that we learn to stand together in that way and learn to stop on all sides, stop judgment of those kinds of things and just see actually who the person is. Because then we do get those opportunities to to show up more as the truth. And we have all got you know, whatever, whoever we are, whatever, every single human being, I don't think there's any accidents that anyone is here, you know, they, they are born whole and complete with an absolute right to be here, and to be, you know, show up as them, they bring every single human being brings something really beautiful to to this, to this party. And when we can stop being judgmental of ourselves and others, then that, oh, you know, the, our differences are what makes it so amazing and so beautiful when we can see them through the eyes of love they are freaking awesome when we're too, when we're busy judging they look like things that we need to change and things that need to be you know you need to paint me black or I need to paint you white or whatever and it's like when we stop being like that when we stop seeing that we can just see the beauty in for years and years and years and years, I wanted to have straight hair. And I thought straight hair was nicer than curly hair. And then when I kind of just decided, why don't you just embrace and love your curly hair? It's like, I absolutely love it now. And it's so much more beautiful. You know, it, it clearly used to feel my disdain and judgment and not liking of it. And now I absolutely think it's awesome. And it's the same, you know, it, whether it's that, whatever it is, when we judge something as not good enough, not right as it is, and that if it was different in some way, it would be better, then we don't see the value and the beauty and, the, and what it brings. And yet when we start to look at it and kind of see, actually, there is something truly beautiful there. Because I can see that with all sorts of people and things in my life. You know, I know when my son was struggling with his stuff and I would be judging him and thinking he should be different. You know, he shouldn't be that person. He shouldn't be like that. And now it's like, yeah, if I can drop that judgment of him and recognize that's just a thought that I have made up, that I have believed to be true, like you did with about your mom. Like, it's like, oh gosh, if I don't, if I choose not to listen to that thought, choose not to take it on, I can see people as they really are, all sorts of people and all people. And it's like all boats rise with the tide. When we when we create that space in us, we create that space in the world. And everybody gets to use that space of, of seeing something really beautiful in something that potentially at some point we had judged as, you know, being it, it shouldn't be that way and you know I love it when you when we was talking earlier and you alluded to like I've been through what I've been through and you said yeah you've been through the same but your version of it and I thought oh yeah I can hear that but I know that five years ago I would have taken exception to that comment and like 
you've never been through the same. You don't look like me. You don't know what I've been through. You don't. And I'd want to list all the things what you don't know because we're not the same. But to know that I can hear that and I can feel it and I don't need to know your story. I don't need to know any particulars about it. Mm. But I know that it's the same thing that's running behind in the background. Absolutely. Exactly Absolutely. the same thing. And the, yep. whatever pain or struggles or whatever that looked like for me, it can look like for somebody else in a total different shape. And it could look like my happiness. You could yeah. be <laughs> going around the world on a yacht and doing the most, living the most amazing Instagram life. But to you, that's not what you want to just be in a, in a garden planting turnips. <laughs> but because you're doing that now, and oh, bloody hell, let me do this. And I'm looking at that and thinking, oh my God, she's living the most. I don't know that we can relate on the same level of pain or it doesn't matter what the content looks like. And I love it when you take it onto that judgment part because that's what fuels us. When we, like, we're most hard to judgment on ourselves and then it's from that space that we look outwardly and we judge other people and we have expectations and standards and, but it's to truly know that all of that is made up from our own thinking. And certain things, I'll see something and it'll be like, oh, why that person doing that? Mm -hmm. and I think that that's a set law that has been but then it's just my thinking on probably what a judgment I've got on myself if I, I was to do that if I was to be seen doing that and it's just about knowing that and breaking it down and just knowing just like you said just more be me because what is me makes me me if that makes sense and where I'm outward looking and trying to be somebody else or trying to judge somebody else it's all about the judgment on myself and if if I can see through that and not have so much on myself, then that eases, like you said, it gives a space for me to be less judgmental than other people. And now I can truly see through, like you said, I can truly see through the content and just go behind to that same system that we're all working from, where from that space before thought, where there's no judgment on absolutely anything, then it's from that space there that I see so many solutions and so many collaborations and when we don't focus on the differences and we focus on the commonality and yeah. that we're all thinking from the same world and we're just producing different paint we're just producing different paintings different canvases <laughs> but I can truly appreciate the beauty in your canvas I might not even have to understand it but I know that we're using the same paint and we're using the same source and that is the beauty that like I said when I see certain things that I wouldn't have seen five, six years ago. It just so beautiful to me to know that I've seen something one way all my life and then to know that there's been all other ways I could have seen it and I'm yet to experience it. When I get out of the past and out of the future and just be present, then I can truly, as your motto says, dare to be me. And Sometimes it's a challenge because sometimes my thinking gets in the way and it's like, hey, what am I doing? Are you sure they booked you sure book the right person? Are they, are they, are they, I'm waiting for the other person to turn up. I'll just stand in for now. But when I truly get into it and I know that I can really dare to be me and it's always okay. It's always okay. The judgment on myself comes off a little bit and then I can ease up and see the judgment what I'm putting on other people. And that just gives me just that little bit of space a little bit of freedom to just buy into a bit more of being me and when it works out me being me works out then I get a little bit more inspired to be a bit more me and, <laughs> exactly. a bit more, and follow a bit more of that wisdom and stay a bit more grounded and a bit more just having trust in how the truth shows up for me mm. But it, it, it's just beautiful it's beautiful and to, and hearing you know like you say when we can see that space that the like we are all a part of the same system you know before thought we are all we are all up against exactly the same thing thoughts that look real to us that we then believe and, and buy into and act from and that is and nobody is outside of that we're all you know, in that system, every single one of us and whatever the details, like you say, the details of that thought can be very, very different for different people. Like you say, the details that I get bought into are very different. I would expect to the, I'm sure we have some similarities, but you know, generally speaking, yeah, they can be the same. They can be different, but seeing 
what we're up against and that system and seeing that sameness and coming together in that commonality then to me what it opens up is the possibility of our differences shining and because equally I think it's brilliant that we're different you know I think it's just it's it's amazing that we're different and when you think of when you think of the human body the human body works perfectly because it has lots and lots of different parts you know we have a brain and we have a heart and we have fingers and we have a digestive system and it, we need those differences to make it all work you know if everything that you know every cell in our body is is the same it kind of it starts off it's the same system it's the same and then it has these differences and it's like absolutely bringing both of those things together the sameness and then the difference and we get something that is you know when you just stop and think of how miraculous our body is you know you only have to look as far as your fingers that it can pick up a pen like try and create something that can pick up a pen without you know it, it doesn't miss it picks it up every time it picks it up at exactly the right you know I have the right how much I hold on to it and that is just my fingers you know and, and what else is there and I just think us as a whole as a world it's the same thing you know we have this commonality that it's really important to see that we have this commonality and then to see you know we don't our bodies would be no good if if every single cell kind of thought, oh, a heart is the best, so I just want to be a heart, and, and we were nothing else. It's like, no, we need skin and eyes and uh, all of those things. And it's exactly the same here to me. It's kind of like there is there is such a beauty in knowing our commonality so that we are not fighting against, you know, I don't get up in the morning and think, oh, my arm's not good enough. No, I can't have that in my life. Oh, you know, oh, that's, 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 that's not good enough. And it's like, when we come together in that way, our sameness and our differences are equally beautiful, are equally important and understanding how we operate so that we can take full advantage of that, both personally, you know, on a small, because everything is just, it's micro and, and meg, whatever the words are, isn't it? <laughs> it's the same on, on tiny levels. It's the same on huge levels. And we see it. It's like, yeah embrace that sameness and know it and embrace that difference and and love it because those two things make up something so magnificent it is beyond comprehension and when we start to judge and go no you're not the same as me and your differences make you yeah, not right and it, it, the whole thing falls apart and yet when we come back together it is just Oh, it's the feeling in the it's the feeling on this call it's the it's that feeling that we navigate by isn't it it's like yeah yeah more of this more of this and even when you get talking about how marvelous and miraculous our bodies are and it's just something that i've just been looking at noticing from recently and to know that like when you slip over when you slip on a banana peel or you slip on something who works out the exact calculation when to put your hand up to counterbalance or yeah. your foot goes out, your foot goes out just the right amount so you can catch the right. Where's that come from? And that is the same thing that works for all of us. We don't have to tune in, we don't have to tune it in, we don't have to oil it up, we don't have to practice on it. I know if I slip, something's gonna kick in in me that's gonna mm -hmm. make me wanna keep my balance. And that's the same for all of us that we run exactly that same perfect perfection. It's only the intellectual version of it that we get mixed up and we say, oh, we're not this and we're not that. But just to know the magnificence of our body, that what we do every morning when we wake up and we engage with the world around us, that beauty and that magnificence of the system, what's going on. And to know like, this is what I love about this understanding, it's always the same thing. The same thing that got me out of the insight when I saw what I saw around my mum is the same simplicity that I've seen to get me out of situations when I've been upset and I've been feeling a certain type of way is to know just like what you said behind the scenes, it's all the same thing running, but for me to be brave enough to be that individual and to be me, whereas before I've been told, yeah, be like the person in front of you and the person in front of you is going to be like the person in front of him and the person in front of him has been like the person in front of him and 
I'm going to tell the person behind me to be more like me. And mm. that's the way the system runs. And if you're, if you're not being like me, then you're different, you're strange. Go over there, there's something wrong with you. It's about embracing that individualism and knowing how it's the feeling that we're all feeling, how it shows up for me, I'm going to express that in my way. And you can see that, and then you can see that and follow that and express it in your way. And that is the beauty of the individualism that we all have. And when we stop trying to be more like the person in front of us mm -hmm. and embrace from that feeling of who we're meant to be or how we're meant to show up, then yeah, it's the most beautiful thing. Because for me, I have to look back and I have to say, hey, all the things that I've been through, all the things I've put myself through, all the things I've experienced, has made me the person that I am today. And if I really want to consider it, is that journey there what has made me in this position, what's put me in this position. So without that, I wouldn't be here now. So if I can sort of honour that and know, say, okay, that was me in my mistake phase, but it's still relevant to me because I've mm -hmm. learned. So then that takes, the off the ta that takes mistakes off of the table because then it's all learning from that space. And in me daring to be me, if everything's on the table, then there is no, there, there is no mistakes. It's all learning. <laughs> it's all learning. Mm -hmm. This is all for the first time. And it's not, love what you said earlier. It's not from, this is where I used to live in the past or the future. So if I do something and it starts to look like a situation from the past, that's it. It's locked in. That happened. We're not going to make that happen again. Let me take evasive action for that not to happen again. Mm. That hasn't even happened yet. But I project <laughs> it in my head. And because I'm taking action against it happening, it's more than likely going to happen. <laughs> but when I just know, okay, every, I've got this thing where I say, every situation is brand new. This mm. time here now, talking, is never going to get back again. No. And we could meet tomorrow morning, and start a conversation that will be totally different. I'll be in a different space, you'll be in a different space. Mm. So then let me try to use a fresh thought for every fresh moment. Let me try not to use old thinking for new moments. Because mm. when we use old thinking in new moments, we always end up in the same old situation. Yeah. And for me, this is like, you know when, it's like I know it's like for the channel tunnel. So when they, I remember when they were building the channel tunnel, I remember them saying they they got the calculations that and that to make the two ends meet from the France end to the England end. And they were saying that the calculations are so acute that if you got the tolerances were so acute, if you got one inch, no, something some crazy like one one point point one millimeter of an inch wrong at this end, then by the time it got to the, that end, it will be like a hundred miles off. <laughs> and that is how I see it. When you see that thought and you have a shift, then that shift takes you a million miles away from where you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. But when you're in that space of where you're always meant to be, then it takes you exactly to where you're meant to be. But just then all it takes is a 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.1 of a shift. And then you take you somewhere totally where you've never been before. And that is a space where I'm sort of currently inhabiting. Like everything's new. And when I see something that looks old, I try to encompass it with new thought and see what happens. And where I end up is very rarely even close to where I was ending up before. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, total, total sense. Yeah, it does. This is it. We don't need, like when you described what your insight was, it's like, oh, I've always blamed my mom. Like in one sense, you sort of said that wasn't, but that's that tiny, it only needs to move you that tiny little bit. And like, if you'd have carried on, you'd have dealt drugs again. You'd have been back in prison again. You'd have been ticking boxes again. You'd have been kind of there, but you sort of shifted that merch and just that merch going in that direction sort of took you miles away from who, who you were. So yeah, we don't, I know sometimes when we, when people talk about like, and when we think about the, the, the moment that Sydney Banks had and, and other spiritual leaders, you know, have had these huge awakenings and it's like, oh yeah, you know, all I saw was this, but it's like, it's all, it's all beautiful. And it is like you say, it only needs to be this much, um, just this tiny little seeing of something different and it, where we end up, that's a new thought, that's a new space, that's something completely different. You know, look at, you know, 
we wouldn't have been speaking if you hadn't have had that insight you could well be back in prison now or and I doubt our paths would have crossed you know, you're in London I'm in North Devon you know your world my world I, I can't see our worlds would ever have collided if you'd have carried on on your trajectory and I on mine before you know before the insights I had I wouldn't have been sharing this I wouldn't have been in this arena so you know you and I would never have met but for those two little tiny shifts that that took place that created something completely different you know this mm. this beautiful conversation this lovely feeling it's like yeah that that was created from the tiniest of shifts so yeah very often we can dismiss those things and sort of think oh yeah my insight was only a tiny one or, or I don't feel like I've had an insight or anything but it is like yeah we don't we don't need to move massively to be on a very very different journey indeed so yeah, yeah that's and you know beautiful. what I've realized with this as well is because that was like for me as well people had insights in the groups that I was on and they were coming in oh my god I've had an insight <laughs> I've, thrown this, I've thrown away this I've thrown away that oh my god it's like whoa what did you see and I suppose sometimes people endeavor to look for that big insight that's yeah bam, the one that's going to change your life but I know that there's a few situations that I've been in and I've done things that are out of character to how I thought I would have done them. And I thought, huh? I can't tell you what insight led me to do that. <laughs> no, I couldn't. And if I was to sit down and try to work out what insight led me to do that, what insight led me to just instinctively say that, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'd, end up in a, I'd end up in a rabbit hole trying to look for each yeah. insight, what led to each new behavior, which led to this, which led to that. Forget that. I just know the big insights and the small insights are just as powerful yeah. as 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 all of them. Just yeah. just the insight to see something new. Yeah. That is the power. Do you know the power to see something new? Is like I was speaking the other day and I was saying, all my life I had like a shelf with the records I would run on my world experience and <laughs> put me in a situation. I'll look to the record shelf and I'll think, yep, yeah, this one, that this one. record, <laughs> and I'll put that record on and I know what's gonna happen. Because yeah. I was smart like that. I was so intellectual. I, I was smart. I knew what you were going to say before you were going to say it. <laughs> so then I would have something in play. I would, yeah, that is how I thought my mm -hmm. world run. So I'd have these five records and I'd always know which one to play. And that was my life. Nothing outside of those five records. I didn't need anything outside of those five records. Everything I needed was in those five records. Mm -hmm. But I've seen that my, my availability on what I can put now is infinite 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 and i can still look and i can still see that old shelf with the five records on it <laughs> gathering dust i don't use them anymore but i can still see them and say oh wow i used to use that record yeah. i used to oh and i can see my limitations how i used to limit myself but like i said nobody's come from outside of me and taken away any nobody's come and unlocked anything for me i sort of unlocked that for myself by just knowing that my availability is much more than five records and the the, the way it sounds the way it feels that like i've upgraded from a gramophone to a um, mp3 player or mp4 with hd with stereo <laughs> dolby with everything and it's just about knowing that what i thought i could access or what i thought was available to me was so limited yeah but like you said just by having that little shift i've got a, a whole plethora like a uh, the, the, the vastness of what's available <laughs> to me I can't even put into words and I love the way that you keep on saying like what I went through and what you went through my might content wise might seem a bit like ooh, 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 but it's the same thing yeah. I cannot put that as much on anyone it's the same thing yes yeah, so when people think oh Derek's got a story oh I could never no if I tell my story people will be like oh wow and all the, the power of a story is so key to embracing it and knowing that it's if we can explain it from that truthful space, what resonates with people, and you'll find that, like I said, because we all operate from the same system, so when we speak from that truth, it will resonate. It will resonate. And I think, yeah, just being in that space of, and in a way, it's the uncomfortability, but it's the <laughs> uncomfortability knowing that I'm comfortable that the universe will take care of me. Not knowing, it's you know that unknown. Yeah. 
where <laughs> the unknown can be a bit like, ooh, a bit. <laughs> but it's not. And I've got this thing where I, I said it from a long time where, you know, like there's a film, I can't remember what film it is, where you go to the edge of a cliff and then someone told you, you have to have faith, have faith, <laughs> have faith, young Padawan. And you put your foot out and but have faith. When you put your foot out, yeah, something turns up and it's like, wow. And then you do it again and something turns up and again and something turns up. But yeah, you do, this This what I find. I sort of been doing that. And yeah, something's always turning up. Something's always turning up. But it's uncomfortable when you're lifting your foot. Yeah. <laughs> This is what I truly believe. This is why life and thing is so funny. I truly believe that the second you don't believe that nothing's going to be there to support you, you'll fall. <laughs> you'll fall. When I mean fall, I mean just like what you said. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I would have got back into the old lifestyle. I would have done this. I would have done that because I don't believe. I don't believe there's nothing there that's going to hold me up. Yeah. But then every time you lift your foot up, you have to have that same faith again because that, that faith that you had before. As we know from this understanding, that was then. So what's going to happen now? Now, I'm not going to put the same thinking on, oh, yeah, it happened before, so it's going to happen again. Mm-hmm. No, I have faith that I know that it's definitely going to happen. It's going to happen, not because it happened before, but because it's right to happen now. And that's where the faith comes from. And then that, I keep on walking, and there's always been something to um, to, to, <laughs> to, to, to carry my weight. I, and I, I still, love that. I still haven't made it to the other side. But I think the key, I think the key is the not to focus. Yes, not to focus on the other side. The key is to focus on the next, the the next, next step. step. The next yeah, step. Yeah, the next yeah. step. Yeah. I'm I'm actually at the moment I'm in the process of buying a piece of land actually this week that the, the that sale should complete. And then I'm gonna build a home. And this was something that I was like called to do. It's sort of And it's just, it's madness. It's total bonkers, out the park madness. And it is literally like, right, okay, just take the next step. Just take the next step. Just take the next step. And this is definitely something, exactly what you described there. It's like, I just, I have a knowing in me that I'm headed in the right direction. And it's like, right, okay, just keep taking the next step then. And let's see where it goes. And it is very much, I lift my foot up and I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I have faith. Have, whoa, the next piece. Is just, it's been, yeah, it's 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 a, a beautiful journey, and I'm absolutely, I'm loving it. I'm loving the the unfolding of it, and the and I, I, you know, to sort of round up, I think on everything that we have shared today, I think that the two key things that have really come out of this to me is that sameness on and all across the board you know we're we're all operating from we're all up against the same thing we're all operating from the same thing and we also all have the same availability to find a way out of it you know our own personal insights and whatever insights we have are exactly tailor-made and perfect for us to step more into being more of who we are and this whole idea about try, yeah that so just seeing we're all the same we all have the same potential to 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 fill out our potential to reach our full potential to have this faith and this trust whatever whoever we are whatever we are what, what whatever has happened any of it it's sort of like yeah we, we've got this blank canvas and this amazing it just doesn't matter we've all got it so I I just love that (laughs) have you got any last words before I stop recording today I just think that's been a beautiful conversation yeah no I think it's been a beautiful conversation as well Deborah and um just to say that for me like I said at the beginning seeing my full potential as just not having to do what I used to do Mm -hmm. was enough of a start for me and even if that's the insight that started off to say, yeah, I could be anything I want to be, which means I don't, which was just one thing. That one thing, having faith in that one thing has led me on to see so much more into my unlimited potential. And sometimes we can think it has to look like this or it has to look like that. It doesn't have to look like anything. It just has to feel like something that you can do. And if it feels like something you can do, then previously you might have thought I couldn't do it. But when we feel it from that space, it then becomes possible because we feel it is possible. Mm-hmm. And when we feel it's possible, it's possible. 
Um, yeah, that, that, that is our thing. You've just seen that potential from within ourselves grow from one thought. And that's what we talk about. One thought can lead us to anywhere we need Absolutely. to be. Anywhere. And just last, I've got this thing that you only got the compass in um, Pirates of the Caribbean, what points you to what you need. It doesn't point you to what you think you need. <laughs> it to what you yeah. Need. And when we follow that and the other thinking is saying, no, but I, I want to go left. I've always planned to go left. The compass is telling you to just ease to the right. Yeah. We just follow that with that feeling because that will feel right and it will take us to where we need to be. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. So if anyone um, would like to get in touch with you, know more about you, can you tell us? Um, I would like you to, I'll, I'll put the information under the video anyway, but, you know, where where can people find you if they want to know more about you, what you do, your story, anything like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm current director of the Free PGC, which mm -hmm. is the Free of Global um, Community. So I'm, I've got a bit of my story up there, and if you want to find out more, well, I do some work with Beyond Recovery and a couple of... Um, CIC organizations, but yeah, you can put my links up there, there and I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was, it was lovely. I really, really enjoyed our conversation. So thank you. Oh, thank you.